What's going on everyone? Jan Hella here and today we're in my living room. This is my little battle station trying to figure it all out right here. Hopefully it works. And like I've mentioned before, I do want to start doing a more of a series where I talk about the back end of barbering. Not so much the tutorials and all that. Plenty of that content on YouTube. But more so the back end, the more personal, the stuff that you kind of learn along the way. You, do, you don't learn it in class. You don't learn it unless you're in the thick of it. So that's what I want to talk about. Yeah, so today the topic I want to talk about is rapport. Good old Google will tell us exactly what that is because by definition, I don't remember it. So let's pull it up real quick. Rapport, it's a noun. A close and harmonious relationship in which the people or groups concerned understand each other's feelings or ideas and communicate well. And by that, it's pretty much the relationship you have with your client. And this is something that can be applied outside of barbering as well. And also within the barbershop with your peers. I mean, I've worked in many shops where there has been no rapport and it's, it's not an environment that you want to be a part of. Um, for myself, I'm pretty malleable. I get along with virtually everybody. You're gonna be with somebody for hours on end per, you know, for however long and rapport is extremely important. So that's why I wanna talk about it. Let's bring out the book. I have to write this down or else I'm sure as hell forget about it. That pretty much breaks down what is rapport. And for me personally, it takes, it takes time, it takes understanding and you pretty much have to, you know, build a relationship with somebody. And, you know, at the end of the day, they can choose to build on that relationship as well or they can not, right? When it comes to barber and client relationship, I mean, it's a transaction. When you break it down, it's a transaction. But when you go to the deep core of it, it's a relationship. You know, it's a friendship that's built over time. I look at it as more so investing in those who invest in you. These individuals, they can go anywhere else in the world, right? Realistically, these clients can go anywhere else in the world, but they choose to go to you. And I feel that's super important and needs to be acknowledged. But I do have a core clientele because by those principles, invest in those who invest in you. And so, and that's the rapport I've built. That's the rapport I've built with my clients and the rapport I've built with other people's clients. So the rapport I've built with other people's clients is, you know, it's being cordial, saying what's up to them when they come into the shop, saying bye when they leave and asking how they're doing, you know? Um, and you don't have to, you don't have to build rapport with just the people who sit in your chair, build it with everyone who comes to your door. At that point, if you do it that way, let's say their barber is sick <laughs> you know 2020 so let's say they're sick they go to you right they'll go to you because you've built a little bit of a re relationship with them where they're comfortable enough to sit in your chair i mean it helps right i'm not saying poach <laughs> definitely don't do that i'm not talking about poaching a client i'm talking about building rapport with somebody where that individual will feel comfortable going to your chair if absolutely need be. And personally, right, personally, I'd much rather have one of my clients go to someone else in the shop versus a different shop. At the very least, they're supporting somebody who, you know, who's in my ecosystem, you know, who is there on day in and day out. And I'd rather see that than have someone go to another shop. And you know, it's important, right? So why is rapport important for the barbershop? Because the pen, you know, our barbershop is definitely a place where people come in and they they build it up as their local barbershop. They build their own ecosystem within it. They'll refer their coworkers, their friends, family even, to come to the shop. There's plenty of shops to go to, whether you want to do it by price, proximity, whatever it is. But the rapport you built with your clients gives them that sense of community, um, camaraderie, friendship, that you know what, they're willing to invest more than just their own selves, but friends and family too. And this is something that isn't just barbershop related, obviously, right? You can, you know, you utilize report pretty much every single day, whether you're going to your local grocery store, your local coffee shop, if you're a hobbyist, wherever you go to sustain your hobbies, the gym, local card shop, wherever it is. Rapport is being developed on a day-to-day -day basis. And all of this applies outside of the barbershop. It applies to, you know, everyday life. Now, you know, it's, it's tough because 
who do you extend yourself to essentially, right? When it comes to rapport, it starts with yourself. So who do you extend it to? Um, whoever sits in your chair, right? I mean, you're gonna get a lot of people who look at a haircut as just that, it's a haircut. They don't need the conversation, they don't need they don't need the friendship. They don't need the investment. It's solely the haircut. And hey, if it's a mutual understanding that that's all they want, some people will, you know, at some point they'll slowly get out of that and start more so investing with conversation, right? Is this, it's gonna start with the conversation. They like that, you know? They don't want somebody who's gonna feed them small talk. Truth be told, I run behind all the time just because I do invest so much in my clients with conversation. Not only do we talk about, well, for one, I don't, I don't give a damn about sports. Everyone knows this. The shop pokes fun at me for sports. I don't care. If sports is what makes you a man, okay, let that be the case. My clients know this. Um, they always make mention like, oh yeah, you don't watch sports. We have the understanding where it's something that's kind of funny to, pick fun, to poke fun of, you know? I don't care. I'm not gonna be offended that I don't watch sports. <laughs> which also means that I wasn't hurting during the pandemic because everyone else was stressed out because he couldn't watch sports. So jokes on you. But yeah, you know, for me personally, I extended to I extended to everybody. Whether you're coming to town for the first time or you you're breezing through, you've been in town for a long time, but just try out the shop for the first time, regardless of who, what, when, where. I always extend the same level of rapport with every single person who sits in my chair. Not everyone is like that. Some people just don't care, but hey, that's my personal method. And for me, it's worked. And you know, initiating it is hard, right? Cause you are gonna get those people who don't wanna talk. Put your feelers out there and see how it goes. Whether they open up immediately, sometime down the line, it's, it's hard to really gauge, you know, uh, those kind of individuals. I've had clients that are typically looked at as a little more socially inept in majority barbershop settings, but I'm able to find that common interest and talk about it. It's not easy. It's not something that you're gonna figure out right away. It takes time. And you know, there's no timeline as when rapport kicks in, right? So when does rapport kick in? It kicks in whenever, it's, whenever they're comfortable, you know? Which is hard, right? So you, you don't wanna deal with an awkward client, but they like the way you cut hair. They kind of like the way that you're awkward around them because of their awkwardness and figure something out, something clicked. They, you know, opened up, right? They just all of a sudden opened up and made it a little bit easier because they're awkward, they're a little awkward. And so, you know, what happens when rapport isn't developed? I mean, you can only do so much. I understand that, right? You can only extend your friendship so much to somebody before they start taking it for granted. I mean, there's been times where, you know, I thought the rapport has been developed really well. Maybe they come in with an on and off day and it feels like as if it never existed, but it's, uh, it's one of those things, man. <laughs> Not every day is gonna be ideal. Not every single conversation is gonna be perfect. And that's kind of why rapport is huge, I mean, whether they're having an off day or you're having an off day, if the rapport has been developed, then you get over it, right? I mean, you're not gonna be lingering over that one instance because that one instance is not gonna ruin however many you know haircuts worth or years worth of relationship and rapport built. You kind of just have to figure it out for yourself. It's kind of tough, man. I'm trying to help as best I can to word this, but I mean, it's all about actually just doing, you know, being in the shop, talking up, talking to people. As a consumer, you want to go to a place where you can do the same, develop rapport, you know? You want to find your local shop. So this thing, that's the thing, rapport goes both ways. It's not even just barber to client, it's client to barber, barber to barber, client to client. I mean, it's, it's a universal thing that is unfortunately right now being lost. So the main reason why I wanted to talk about rapport is because due to this pandemic, it was rough, you know, we, like I said, we've been shut down from March 15th until September 14th or 15th. So a long time to say the least. And if it wasn't for the rapport built with my clients, I wouldn't have had the support from them, you know, on my way back into the barbershop. Being super supportive and I can't thank them enough. A lot of them just 
a lot of them came up to the plate and realized that this was part of their community that they were a part of and they want to support it. And I am extremely thankful for it because without it, you know, you get that little bit of existentialistic thoughts running through your head during, during you know, the, the worst part of uh, quarantine, the beginning, right? It was the worst because we had no idea what was going on. And it's easy to get lost in your thoughts. But knowing there were people out there that I've, you know, known for however long it's been that wanted to support me was, I mean, like I said, I can't thank them enough. <sighs> That's the hard part. Unfortunately, a lot of people didn't develop rapport with their clients and they had no outside support. I mean, it sucks and I feel for it. <sighs> hopefully, hopefully this will reach somebody that gets it and needs it sooner than later because and getting through the pandemic with the support of clientele that I've developed rapport with has been a, it's been, I don't want to be too much of a cliche, but it's kind of been a blessing, right? So it's kind of been a blessing. I hope that this helps somebody, you know? So, so yeah, so comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have rapport with your clients or if you had trouble developing rapport with your clients, you know, it's circumstantial. Like it if you found value. Let me know if you find, find value in developing rapport. Subscribe, let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of content. I definitely want to talk about more behind the scenes aspects of barbering. And like I said, all this stuff is translatable outside of it. So until the next time, pomp hard, but we will do some other videos. Um, I had some stuff to manipulate lighting, but I didn't try. So let's try it out right now. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I'd personally like to think, ooh, I touched the microphone, right? They'll, they'll refer, get into that mush mouth. But hey, my, ooh, I touched the microphone. And the reason why I want to <clears throat> comment below, let me know if you are the type of barber that, dang kid, <laughs> my kid is plugging in her, her, uh, her new light onto her desk, hear it through the walls. Do you hear it through the mic? We'll find out. Finding a place that where you can develop rapport, right? I mean, rapport, rapport.